Hurricanes are a devastating force of nature. Sustained winds of over 150 miles per hour can occur during the most violent of these storms, and when combined with massive amounts of rainfall, these events can cause billions of dollars of property damage. Currently, Hurricane Florence is headed right for the U.S. East Coast, and is on track to be the most powerful storm to hit North Carolina since Hurricane Hugo in 1989. Already, well over a million people from coastal areas have been evacuated due to the possibility of severe flooding and destructive winds. But how did this superstorm form? Let's take a look. Florence was born as a tropical depression near the coast of Africa in the Atlantic Ocean, similarly to how almost all hurricanes which affect the American East Coast first take form. At its early stages, Florence was likely not too different than a severe thunderstorm, as the circular movement of wind had not yet begun. As the tropical depression that would become Florence began moving northeast across the Atlantic Ocean, low-density warm air and moisture from the surface of the ocean spun upwards into the middle of the storm system and out the top. Once it reached this higher pressure area, the warm air cooled and deposited its moisture as clouds before sinking back down towards the low pressure area beneath the system. After warming up again and collecting more moisture from the ocean, the air would spin upwards, deposit moisture, and fall over and over again. This created kinetic energy, similarly to an engine being cranked up. And as the energy level of the storm increased, so did the amount of air and moisture spinning up and out. Eventually, the winds created from this motion surpassed sustained speeds of 74 miles per hour and elevated our tropical depression into a Category 1 hurricane. Now that Florence was born, she had quite a journey before she would come anywhere close to the U.S. Usually, Hurricanes which follow similar trajectories as Florence are dissipated by strong winds or lose energy over the ocean, but Florence did not behave like most hurricanes. Even after unfavorable wind conditions ripped the storm system apart around September 7th, westward blowing winds brought Florence to better conditions, where it quickly regained lost strength and elevated to a Category 4 hurricane the very next day. At this point, the westward winds allowed Florence to regain her strength and were now blowing her directly towards the U.S., and as of now, she is likely to hit the North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia coasts on Thursday evening. Undoubtedly, the damage caused by this storm will be immense, no matter what category it is when it makes landfall. And anyone who is living near the coast in predicted impact areas should evacuate. I will try my hardest to film the hurricane's impacts on my inland backyard ecosystem when it is safe to do so. And as of now, I'm expecting to see a large increase in amphibian activity during the weather and more reptile activity after the clouds are clear. Well, thank you all for checking out this episode of The Wild Report. I really hope that you learned something new about where this hurricane came from and why it is likely to be so devastating upon landfall. I would really appreciate it if you could share this video with your friends so they can learn about Florence's origin. And if you enjoyed this video, leaving a like would really help me out. I wish the best to everyone in the path of Florence, and will continue to update my subscribers about conditions caused by the storm here in the North Carolina Piedmont. This is Benzino of The Wild Report, signing out.